Chances are you've never heard of Lamplighter Energy because they've been keeping a low profile. But they're about to make a big splash in Hawaii by turning sewage wastewater into hydrogen fuel that will supply electricity to Kunia Village on the North Shore. This is game-changing technology that's good for the environment and consumers' wallets. Lamplighter started 13 years ago as a project development company in renewable energy. We work with wind power, solar, and hydroelectric. And in the last four years, we've been working in the hydrogen space, producing hydrogen as a fuel for our automotive vehicles and for backup power, remote power installations. So our first project was in Arizona, where we were able to repurpose existing wind turbines that had been taken down and put them up for a second use at an existing warehouse facility. From there, we grew to do projects globally in Eastern Europe, wind projects in Bulgaria, solar projects throughout the southwest and southeast of the U.S. We've also done water and solar and wind projects throughout Asia and Europe. About two years ago, I moved back to Hawaii, where I'm from, in Waianae. And in January, the state had a charrette to look into hydrogen and expanding its footprint here in Hawaii. At the time, I met Carl Fuchs, who's with the state. He made a great introduction to Real Green Power, who brought us into Hawaii Agricultural Research Center for the project that we're doing here today. We came here for the first meeting, I want to say it was April of this year, and sat down with the management team here at, uh, at the research center and really interesting meeting. They had a desire to move into renewables. They really needed a focus on trying to save money. Uh, a lot of the value of this project isn't the research center saving money. I think this is something a lot of people miss. It's the ability for them to reduce their price of water to the farming tenants in the Central Valley of Oahu. So what we're doing by reducing their overall price of electricity, they're able to apply that to their water pumping and the farmers will see that in their savings on water. I'm Dave Robichaud. I'm the president of the Cunia Village Title Holding Company. Between 1928 and 2008, it belonged to Del Monte, Hawaii, uh, and it was a plantation camp. So now the village is maintained by this nonprofit, Hawaii Agriculture Research uh, Center, and its holding company. We're operating 121 single family homes now, and we hope to expand to 200 and they're reserved for farm workers that are making less than 80% of the median family income. We don't make any money at all off the houses. As a matter of fact, on a good month we break even and a lot of times we don't off, off the housing. We also have 200,000 square feet of commercial area and the money from that, uh, commercial leases, goes to support the research and diversified agriculture. We also work quite closely with uh, Pacific Gateway Center, which is a farm worker trafficking prevention and support agency. HARC's director, Stephanie Whalen, supported the aspect of rural communities. The, the idea of a small rural community being, supplying its needs, being that net producer again, is very, very attractive to us. So from the very first, we've said, hey, we can grow our own food. Uh, and in fact, we have a little farmer's market here and uh, you can get the best asparagus, tomatoes, peppers, or whatever. We've looked for ways to be more sustainable, more independent, really. And so, so when Lamplighter came onto the scene and said, hey, I can sell you electricity at a substantial reduction. I'll guarantee a rate for 21 years. Let me stop there. Who else is guaranteeing you their rate for any amount of time? What's not to like about this? One of the other advantages of working with Lamplighter is they've, they will supply us with much better quality power, much more reliable. We have power outages once a week. We operate three very, very large uh, electrical motors that supply irrigation water to all of central Oahu. Now, these are expensive motors and they really hate poor quality power. We have to replace them every five years at three or four hundred thousand dollars each. Lamplighter has guaranteed us 98% uptime. Our power doesn't go through, is not subject to fluctuations over the million miles of the grid. We have a direct line from a battery, which is very, very stable, to these electric motors. So I anticipate that we won't have to buy motors every five years going forward either. We're going to try and pave the way for intensive agriculture using locally generated power biomass energy, wastewater recycling, a lot of the things that are wasted now. Earlier this year, Governor Ige signed into law our 
renewable mandate to get to 100% renewables. What a lot of people miss is that also includes our automotive fuel. And so we believe strongly that EV adoption will be a big part of that, electronic vehicles, but also hydrogen because they both serve different needs. And hydrogen fuel is a very long-standing technology and available. So our approach to making hydrogen is to work with solar to electrolyze water, to separate the hydrogen from the oxygen, capture the hydrogen, use that as a fuel source, capture the oxygen and use that for agricultural purposes or medical grade oxygen. So what we're looking at here are three carrier refrigeration units. These are 40 foot containers used for shipping produce refrigerated. As the containers are corrupted on their ability to ship structurally, they buy them and the agricultural producers put them in the field. So here we are at Pacific Gateway Center's field. So this is where they grow a lot of their produce with the, the farmers that they work with from Thailand and, and Laos. And as they harvest the produce, they'll move it into one of these 40-foot refrigeration containers. To run a refrigeration container requires a large amount of electricity. Historically, one of these portable Caterpillar diesel gensets would be used. When this thing gets turned on, you can imagine the amount of noise, the amount of pollution, the diesel that goes to be used, and the cost that's associated with that. And here we have a hydrogen fuel cell, field rated to be outdoors, operates 24-7, we just deliver the hydrogen to the unit. The only emission is hot water that vaporizes out the back of the unit. And this runs much more cost effectively than one of these units will. I'm the Director of Operations with EcoShade. We are specialty contractors that specialize in aluminum structures. We've been operating on Oahu for the last six years. We've got structures on the Trump International Hotel. We have contracts with three of the different Marriott resorts, Sheraton. Here at this location we're going to be doing uh, greenhouse structures, bifacial solar panels on top to act as the glass and basically that way the, the space below can be used for agriculture. Not wasting the land by having a ground mount solar system but by raising those panels up and so it can still be used, still producing solar energy and providing uh, energy for whatever they need it for. We're here at Cuneo Wastewater Treatment Plant. This is a facility that services all the wastewater for Cuneo Village and the agricultural community surrounding. And what we'll be doing here is installing the Real Green Power System to take this entire wastewater treatment facility offline. So for the last few years, we've been operating a system in Hawaii Kai that runs in tandem with that wastewater treatment facility to prove the system works and proves it works over a period of time. Here at this facility, we'll actually be taking this older, antiquated wastewater system offline and in the end, save the community a significant amount. As the system ages, it needs a lot in repair and replacement. We'll be able to install our system, receive the benefit of using that wastewater that would normally be wasted for making hydrogen. Up to 240 million gallons a day of wastewater is pumped into Hawaii's oceans. This is one of the first steps in retrieving that wastewater to make hydrogen. Also capturing all of that methane gas and being able to process that into hydrogen as well versus emitting it into the atmosphere as a harmful greenhouse gas. So this system will be installed alongside the solar facility to work and provide long-term stable power for the community. After the break, we'll visit the Hawaii Kai Sewage Treatment Plant where they're already converting wastewater into hydrogen on a smaller scale. You'll wonder why we're not doing this throughout the islands instead of pumping millions of gallons of treated water into the ocean every day.